You know what's the nice part when you're the star? At a restaurant and they give you tea, you can declare an unofficial break. And guess what, guys? It's break time before we've even started getting working. Murmansk is a magical location in the great white north of Russia, but with all this snow around, could there possibly be good food here, or does everything just come from a can? Well, looks like we're going to find that out right now. We started our journey in Tiribirka, a tiny arctic fishing village featured as an impoverished hellhole in the Oscar-nominated film Leviathan, which now has a fine dining seafood restaurant at its center. Wait, what? For starters, we have this lovely looking fish salad, which is very exciting, but I might not even have room for it because look at that salmon steak. My mouth is watering. I love salmon on the grill, a little quinoa on the side, which I appreciate, and balsamic vinegar, always a classy touch. And here we have the piece de resistance, a ton of local seafood. Look at it all. In fact, they even said that the theme of this is that the sea urchins are still technically alive. So if you see this one try to escape, He's still alive. He knows what I'm gonna do to him. Uh -huh. Let's get the whole big piece of crab out. There we go. There. Now I know why they gave me those scissors. Anyways, we've got it. Let's do it. Oh. Yep, you're not gonna get that in Moscow. You're not gonna get that in Moscow. That's absolutely Absolutely perfect. Wow. Guys, in one of my videos where I went to Yuzhna Sakhalinsk on the island of Sakhalin by Japan, we tried sea urchin that was fresh. I'm gonna try it for you right now. Very different. Um, like the kind in, in Yuzhna Sakhalinsk was very like fruity. This is more like smooth. It's very soft and it also melts in your mouth. I can see why people eat this. Very very soft, absolutely melts. Now people say it melts in your mouth, but this actually like really does. Now, one thing is you're seeing like all this seafood. Now, why is this so special? Because, friends, I'm gonna take this with me. I don't know, where are we gonna be able to see it? Well, the light allows. You see out there? This all came from right out there. We are at the Arctic Ocean, baby. All right, let's do this. Mmm, chewy, super fresh. No, oh, amazing. If you're a seafood lover, you've got to get this. One of the big hits at the restaurant is eating freshly opened, aka still living, sea urchins and scallops, which actually react to being squirted with lemon juice. This was pretty awesome and delightfully cruel. Well, since the owner showed me how to do it, now I can open sea critters like a pro. Priyama super sviege, what limon. Tolka sto atkrilas. It just opened. Let's do this. See, I'm so excited. I don't even know what language I'm speaking. There we go. And do it. Mm. So, you have a fine dining restaurant where locals catch all the seafood, then chefs prepare it for you the very same day in a tiny Arctic fishing village. This, my friends, is what you call a dining experience. I 100% recommend stopping by the Tiribirsky Berig restaurant. Do it. By random chance, as we were driving around through the village, we noticed signs made of wood that said brewery. It was kind of hard to believe, but here it is. And it's apparently the northernmost brewery in Russia, the Arctic brewery. So uh, yeah, let's go inside and uh, see what they make. Before actually trying the beer, we asked if we could take a look around. And like most Russians, they didn't care. Здравствуйте, Тим. Здравствуйте, Фил. Well, in short, Phil told me that this is all basically one big passion project of the man who opened the brewery, and that all the machinery and all the materials that go into the beer are all from Russia. So if you come here for a drink, you're gonna get a truly Russian beer from A to Z. Okay, let the beer taste test begin. All right, so here we have a light beer. 
Nice smell. Very golden. I like that. Great, smooth, and most important, pretty high alcohol content. We have the dark, which isn't actually too dark. Definitely not a Pilsner. No smell whatsoever. That worries me. Oh, like candy. A very, very sweet, dark, very caramel. Caramel or caramel, depending on your, your pronunciation. Unusual, but unusual in a good way. No smell whatsoever, very sweet, and again, plenty of alcohol content behind it. You know what's nice? This is not your 4% beer, that's for sure. All right, now this, I think it's mead. Sensing a bit of honey. It, it's interesting, it's like someone took a bottle of mead and a bottle of champagne and a bit of water and sort of mix them all together. It's kind of like more of a mead, honey-based champagne. It sounds bad, tastes good. It's definitely softer uh, alcohol-wise than the other. What I have to say is, this was made in a former Soviet daycare center in the middle of nowhere in the Arctic Circle. And it's awesome. And it's awesome even by Moscow standards, by the rest of Russia, by European standards. I'm pretty happy here. This one's a little weak, to be honest. The, the mead, let's get this out of here, mead champagne. Now these two, oh baby, bring it on. Mm. It's hard to imagine any brewery with no foreign machinery even just a few years ago. Now this is a real Russian brewery. Awesome. And the beer itself tastes pretty good too. And gosh, was it cheap. I recommend it. Russia's Great North would remind Americans of Alaska or the Yukon. And when it gets super cold, people survive off deer and elk meat and well, sometimes their blood too. So I thought it would be a total failure if I didn't get any deer slash elk meat in the system while I was here. So let's drive down to Murmansk and get some. Well, friends, in the Murmansk region, not only do you have the chance to play around with reindeer, but you have the chance to eat some that got too old. And anyways, here's our chance. Oh boy. So what do we have here? Some sort of mystery can. It says it's full of delicacies, delicacies from venison. Fantastic grammar, not. Uh, snacks, I think this is jerky, and deer sausage. So anyways, uh, let's tear these open and give them a try. So let's open these in order of easiness to open in a minus 20 degrees Celsius weather. Oh boy. There we go. Haven't quite ruined my teeth yet. Ugh, let's see. Oh, don't tell me there's a package in the package. No, no, no. All right, here we go. It smells like every other beef jerky I've ever had before. All right. It, it is phenomenally cold. Was this in a freezer? Holy moly. Um, it tastes just like beef jerky you get in America, which is a good thing, but it's nothing special. It's just beef jerky. Sticker is fighting me. All right. To be honest, it looks like hair. That's not appetizing. It's a lot softer. It, um, when it's in your mouth, it kind of smells like human feet. And, um, feces and organs. Okay. That was horrific. Uh, uh, audio man Creole, do you want to have this? That was nasty. Oh, my mouth. It just, my mouth tastes like uh, I was involved in some sort of foot-related adult movie. Oh, gosh. Awful. Anyways. It smells like Polish sausage. Or in what Russia, interesting thing, in Russia, Polish sausage is called Krakow sausage, like the specific city. So kind of the same thing. It smells like Polish Krakow sausage. Good thing. Okay, is it wrapped in plastic or is it not wrapped in plastic? See, that's one thing about Russia. 
Sometimes the sausage is in plastic. It's kind of hard to tell. So let's eat around it just to be safe. Oh, it's great. But again, it tastes exactly like Polish slash Krakow sausage. Uh, it's nothing really special. It's just nice. This is really freaking disappointing, guys. Really freaking disappointing. Some of the stuff was good. Some was, um, smelly. Nothing was very cheap. So I guess if you happen to drive by, try it out. But otherwise, I'd pass. All right, well, uh, stopping off at that little stand to get some uh, deer meat was okay. But uh, I want something bigger and better that is also local. So we're on our way to one place that's pretty special. <laughs> So we have a uh, venison deer jerky with a cream sauce there, some brown bread, it looks very nice. We have, hold on, I have to research this, hold on, research, it looks like a potato, not that, not that, not that, not, it doesn't exist, it's a mystery piece, okay. And here we have a, a cod dish, and they say it's one of the 100 best recipes in Russia, which is nothing compared to the spaghetti carbonara recipe that I make for my children. They love it, okay? And here we have a crab, shrimp, and scallop cream soup, which um, could not look any better. All right, okay, hold on a sec. All right. Mm. Chewy in the good way, again, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's take a little bit of this and the sauce, okay? So, a deer jerky. Is that wasabi? Is this like wasabi or something? Or is it in... I'm confused. I'm very confused. It's very interesting, very different. Great idea. And you know what's the fun part about this food, guys? This one. This is a true mystery dish. I have no idea what's happening here. Flavors coming out of nowhere, and it's really good too. And one thing guys, I forgot to mention, which I should have remembered, all this food, all the ingredients come from the Murmanskaya region. It's all local, which is always awesome. Imagine by the smell, this, this feels like a potato. A potato that's green inside. I guess we dip. Dippity dippity. All right. Potato and red wine vinegar, okay. Boy, this restaurant's all full of surprises. It's a, uh, God, how do I even explain that? How do I even explain this? It's, um, it's almost like it's a sweet potato, buttery, and yet the, because I thought this red wine sauce was going to be not that great, but it works perfectly. Bafflingly delicious again. Very unique, very unique. I'm a lucky man. Now, this is probably the most Russian thing I've ever seen. Russians love their cod sliced. Uh, I would call it raw. Russians hate when I call it raw. It should be cured or whatever the hell they call it. But anyways, extremely super ultra Russian. It's also kind of the colors of the flag, which is nice. Oh, another surprise has arrived. Oh, all right. But anyways, let's try this bad boy out. And you know, you see this dish? This is what this cameraman and this audio technician are going to eat the second I let the plate go. That's what I think anyways. All right. It's not really for the American palate, guys. You know, as someone who's born in the United States, cold, nah. It's definitely a Russian thing. Russian palate only, so not for me. No, okay. It's a deer's heart with blueberry cream. Ooh, probably shouldn't have looked that up. I'm not a big fan of organ meat, but uh, okay, when in Rome. Well, hey, for being organ meat, much better than I thought it would be. I'm not usually a fan of organ meat, okay. And obviously guys, deer meat, venison, it is the region, it is the most, local meat of them all, maybe besides fish. So, 
I mean, if you live in the Mormon region and you don't eat venison, there's something wrong with you. Just like if you live in this region, you haven't had amazing crab, amazing shrimp, amazing scallops, you're mental. If you haven't had cured fish, you're also mental. More deer over here. So really, I mean, what you're seeing is you're seeing this region on a plate. Even if it's deer heart. All right. I can't believe someone made heart taste that good. When you've got the entire Murmanska region on one table, all of it is good, even things you normally wouldn't like. Yeah, that's a winner. This is definitely, definitely a must eat. Yeah, the Murmanska region food wise looks a little dead on the surface, but we were able to find plenty of unique northern tundra treats to keep us happy. Rush has always used the cold to its advantage, and when you have access to the Arctic Ocean for amazing seafood, along with top-notch deer and elk meat, you get a great surf and turf experience that you won't find anywhere else. And hey, those craft beers in Tidibirko were like $3 a liter, and that's something that anyone can appreciate. Oh, and uh, local jerky. Uh, you know, I can tell you one thing, um, when I went on hunting trips with my father as a kid, we always had jerky at some point, so it always reminds me of my dad. You don't get to see it too much in Russia, to be honest. So, hi, Dad.